Hi guys and welcome back to Extreme Garage with me, Lawrence. So in my quest to find extreme vehicles, I've come down south to meet Stuart, who's got one hell of a beast of a vehicle. And here it is, what an absolute beast it is. Thank you very much for inviting me down to have a look at it. It's an absolute beast, but what is it? Uh, it's a Marlin airport fire tender. So, why have you bought this particular fire blind? Um, I, I didn't really mean to. I, <laughs> I, was, I was looking for a smaller one, and I saw this one and fell in love with it. Okay, okay that's fair. Uh, and the big question is, what does your partner make of this? Um, She's also bought me one of those funny jackets with the straps on that you can hug yourself with. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's white as well. Yeah. With a Detroit two-stroke diesel 18-litre V12 configuration with two turbos and two superchargers and holds a whopping 14,000 litres of water, this surely puts this as one of the most powerful extreme fire engines ever built. So what are the dimensions of this then? Uh, she's about 3.1 metres wide, 11 metres long and four meters high. So in terms of taking this on an open road, uh, what sort of restrictions are you going to be facing there because it, it, it is a lot bigger than a, a normal fire appliance? Because of the width and the axle weights, um, it comes under special vehicles, which means you've got to give a minimum of two days notice to the police. Right, okay. <laughs> so that's why it's good to go. Yeah. <laughs> the best. Uh, so, so with that said, how, how, what is the gross weight of this? So how, how, how heavy it is? Uh, fully, fully laden. She's uh, gross vehicle weight's thirty-three tons. Thirty-three tons. So, so in terms of like, I mean, my my fire appliance, I have a class two HGV license to use that. Is this the same, or do you need something extra for it because of the size of it? Or? No, it still comes under the class two. I didn't have it when I bought it. <laughs> what your license? No, I only did it in December. Oh, did you? <laughs> Brilliant. So, so regarding the, the project of this whole uh, monster of a machine you've got here, so what have you actually, so, so since, since delivery, what have you actually had to do so far? Um, when it was delivered, the air system was completely shot. Um, it wouldn't pump any air up on the tanks. Mm -hmm. It was losing air all the time. So I've done a lot of work on the air system. I've started doing a lot of work on the brakes. Um, the handbrake is still not working but we're a lot closer to having a working handbrake okay uh the foot brakes now actually stops the vehicle so, so you've now got a sun brake so you yeah. Can at least, yeah you can at least stop it when you go in <laughs> yeah and there's, and there's been a few other little bits and pieces i've been tinkering with but, okay uh, okay so what what are your future uh, plans with the project then uh, i mean what what do you want to see yourself with it in about 12 months time or so uh 12 months time i'd like it to be able to go to some shows, not necessarily finished and fully working, mm -hmm. but, but roadworthy and in a condition where we could we could take it to shows and, and show it. Is that doable? Um, <laughs> it's, <laughs> what, my, my original plan was to have it have it ready for uh, this this season, but it's uh, it's not gonna happen. Yeah. yeah. We're in the cab now, and in terms mm. of starting it, because uh, there's a lot, a lot more dials and buttons and switches than I'm used to in, in mine, uh, is the starting procedure pretty straightforward? The uh, starting procedure couldn't be any simpler, really. It's just a case of ignition on. Yeah. <laughs> them, them are absolutely huge. <laughs> <laughs> Why they are, to be honest. So, I I ignition the, on, yeah. so be this, yeah. yeah. Ignition on and... Oh, well, wow. it's, 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 it's actually quite, surprisingly quiet. Yeah. <laughs> the door's open because it's that far back with yeah. the engine. That is evil. And, it, it, and it's just a simple the stop button for stopping? Stop button. Um, the only problem with stopping is if that has no air in it, it won't stop. Right, okay. <laughs> so if he has no auxiliary air, it won't stop? No. So we'll have to wait for the tank Do to Do you know why it. that is? It's, it's, it's an air operated stop system. Ah, uh, is yeah. it more like a plate over the... No, it's, it's, there's an air ram that pushes the lever around on the fuel pump. 
Ah, oh, right, okay. Um, it's an interesting way of stopping yeah. it rather than just cutting the... Uh, there is there is supposed to be a, an emergency stop cable on the back, but it's broken off. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So that's, that's another list on the, yeah. the job on the list to be done, yeah. Oh. <coughs> on the lovely dash here, uh, the buttons wise, there is a there is a lot. These are, these are just the normal because uh, obviously for six, one for each wheel. Yeah, so these it's quite are, independent. These are for the hydraulic brake reservoirs. Yeah. Um, they have a brake warning lights over here to do with air, but this one's disconnected. I think this is ABS, but I don't know. Okay. Um, but yeah, so that's that's the brake side of it. You've got your two all-wheel drive switches. So one puts it into full six-wheel drive. Uh, permanent six wheel drive and one locks the rear axle with diff locks. Okay. Um, this one's just simply a bulb test for the, the buzzer and the bulbs on the light. Um, you've got your normal hazard lights, you've got your orange flashing beacon, you've got your two tone horn, you've got the grill and the, uh, the back engine cover lights. These two normally do the light bar when it's fitted, this one's a spotlight. Locker lights, fog lights, and this is a deluge wash which is it pumps water down the windscreen to stop the windscreen cracking from the heat of the fire. Ah, okay. That's like quite an interesting feature though, isn't yeah, it? It's another one that doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then on your, on your normal pressure <coughs> dials then? You've got two service brake dials, uh, secondary brake for the handbrake and then auxiliary for the engine stop and the, the firefighting valves. Right, okay. okay. Then you've got your... Fuel tank speedo. What is the fuel capacity of this set? Not a lot. Not that's a lot. that's gone down significantly since I've owned it. Because I'm, I'm guessing they don't really have to go that far when yeah. they're on when they're on airport. It's literally they come out of the shed straight there or to the end. Most it's the end of the runway, and they're probably there for <coughs> 15, 20 minutes, half an hour maybe, depending yeah. on the, the air balances. And at the back, so they only really need about an hour to two hours worth of fuel. So yeah, it's I I, I don't know this how how much the tank holds but it's not as big a tank as you'd expect. Okay. So interesting one to find out now. It's, it's, it's the small, smallest part of the truck. <laughs> uh, warning lights would just say canopies open on the engine. The yeah. Kit. Again they don't work. Um, okay. <laughs> this is a <laughs> this is a torque converter warning light. Yep. Um, once it's in gear that goes out. If it comes on when it's in gear there's a problem. Um, but when they're in neutral it's it's quite normal for that to be on. Okay. This is a warning light for your mains power in. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is all disconnected at the moment. Alternator warning light, low coolant warning light. Uh, we've got battery voltage, engine coolant, temperature, engine oil pressure and transmission temperature. So, so plenty of uh, dials. Yeah. I do like my dials. And then over on your right hand <coughs> panel there. Uh, this is a fire control panel. So you've got your master switch which turns the main panel on. Uh, you've got your PTO stop and start, which unfortunately at the moment is another, another job on the list. Yep. Uh, but then these control all the rest of the valves. So we've got water to tank, uh, sorry, tank water to the pump valve. We've got the foam tank to the pump valve. We've got a valve to open the bumper sprayers, which are underneath the cab, which light, lay down a, a mat of foam. Yep. Um, we've got the two side lines, which are uh, I suppose they're equivalent to a, a normal fire engine's branch lines. And then we've got one for the, the monitor above the cab and a high and low output for the monitor. Oh. So it's, 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 and, and all that's I'm presuming those buttons and the levers are all working off uh, your auxiliary yeah. air pressure? Yeah, they so all work all off the auxiliary pressure. tank. I, when when I, I put the deposit down on this thing, mm -hmm. I loaded my mate, we I said, all oh, ex-boy racers all into cars. I said, oh, I've, just, I've just put a deposit on something. Oh, what you put a deposit on? I said, I'm not going to tell you, but it's got a V12 engine that's behind the driver. It's got a central driving position. And they're like, the only thing we can think of is a McLaren F1. I don't yeah. think it's that. <laughs> it's a Marlin F1. Yeah. <coughs> do the tier times work? Yes. I do. Oh, go on then. Let's get you Cool. Just because I like tier times. <laughs> <laughs> Drew sat in the Land Rover wet in her pants. So, can we actually get out on top then? Can we actually stand up on top? Yeah, if we uh, open the hatch up, we can get out through the roof. Oh, there's a hatch inside? Yeah. Fab. Right, let's do this. <laughs> you know, I've got a tour of a tank, on it. Yeah.
Rex. <laughs> so, because this can be controlled from within the cab without having to come on top. The the water can be started, yeah. but you can't move it from inside the cab. You can't. No. No. Oh, it has to be moved from up here. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I, on on the scene, then somebody would have physically came up. Yeah. And stood on here and sort of would it be in like a, an arm like this or? Um, the manual control handles down there. Which that, that, thing there. that fits in the top here, and you'd stand up on there for manual control. However, it's hydraulically operated off a joystick. Oh, so it can yeah. So, so <coughs> can we just put that in just for? Yeah. yeah it won't actually move because the hydraulics yes. are connected at the moment, but. Oh, and you'd be up here like that. <laughs> Oh wow, <laughs> that is, wow, it's, it's like one of those, you, you, know, when you, you know when you go to the, uh, what is it? the arcades and you have those little ones where you spray the, uh, the pirates there and stuff, <laughs> <laughs> just on a different scale. <laughs> I'm absolutely massive. Yeah, but uh, there's only one that's different, so you've got these two do the sidelines. Yeah. That's your high and low flow, that's your monitor on valve, foam and water valves. This one locks and unlocks the monitor. Okay, in position? Yeah, so it's got, um, it's got a ram underneath there which locks it to, for travel. So you unlock it and then you can, this should have a joystick with some buttons on which that should do the open and close which doesn't work. But then left, right, up and down when the engine's running, it all works. So, so on here then, this is hydraulic lines down here in the wires? Uh, it's hydro hydraulic air and electric, cables. yeah. The water comes straight up through. Straight up through the middle of this here. That's a whopper. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you, you look. Spotlights? Yeah, you've got spotlights on there. Yeah, if you look down there, you can see the actual water pipe in the middle. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. So on, on the side here, is, is this your. That's the monitor control valve, so that's. Um, that just opens up the entry. Yeah. Yeah, so it's air operated, but if you get a failure, there's a handle on the other side that fits onto. If you get F, if you get. Get failures or anything as long as the PTO is running, you can actually manually override all of the firefighting stuff. Um, so just that, yeah, that's that's the up and down um, ram. ram, yeah. It's just massive, it's just absolutely massive. And you got you throttle, you got a throttle control yeah. down here as well. Yeah, hand throttle so you can move the engine up when you yeah. when you're operating the thing. This is your these are bypasses, so they're, they're actually seized at the moment. If you screwed those in, or yeah. screwed them out, sorry, and screwed out the valve down there, that's when you use the manual. It bypasses the hydraulics, so you can then heave it about manually. Right. So, up, up, well, so up on top then, we've got <coughs> these, you've got these two manholey cover sort of things. Yeah, they're access to the water tank. So that's, that's about a thousand litres of water. There's water in there. <laughs> <It's> not... <laughs> get in this tank. I'd say, I'd say if, if you stand here and look down, <laughs> there's um, an access plate. That's how you, I get to the gearbox cable that I need to replace. Oh, there's pipes. So you've been in there? Already? Yeah, yeah I've been, been in, in there. Inside? Yeah, I've been, been in there quite inside. a bit. I was in there on Friday putting that panel back in so I could put water in it. I don't want to say that you'll be able to get in there, Lars. It's easy to get in this one. No, I'm not getting in there. You get, you get in this one, but you've got... Yeah. It's like the crystal maze, you've got to climb through all these holes in the back wall, so you've got to go round here, up there, and then back through to get into that one. Big like fire training. Big up for fire for, for a confined space is... Uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And then that, that big pipe there is just an overflow straight out of the bottom, so when you fill it, the, the hydrant fill is just some stamp pipes. They just just basically run into the tank at the back, and then when it gets full there, it just you know it's full because it's just, there's water pouring out the bottom of the truck. So, so the engine is all in the back here. This this section here is the way yeah. the engine is. It's, it's, it's V12 twin turbo, was it? Twin turbo, twin supercharged. Twin turbo, twin supercharged. That's uh, <laughs>
So Stuart, what a fantastic day I've had looking at the beast. It's absolutely brilliant. I'm looking forward to seeing how you're actually going to get along with this and all the problems that you are going to face with this. They're going to be brilliant to hear about and watch and follow. And I will go and follow. Please do keep me posted on any, uh, any progress with it. And I do want to come down and have a look at it again as you prefer again on. It'd be great to see how you're getting on with it. It'd be absolutely brilliant. And if you guys as well want to follow Stuart's story, Go and look at Project Marlin channel. I'll put a link in the description below and at the end, uh, there'll be a link there. Please go and subscribe, check it out. It's going to be absolutely brilliant. And if you as well have got an extreme vehicle or something, a project uh, that you're planning on doing or doing, please do get in touch with me. I'd love to come down and take a look. So if you like the video, don't forget to give a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, go and subscribe and I'll see you again next time. <laughs> No, no, it's absolutely, it's absolutely bloody brilliant. <laughs>